On this worksheet, we're gonna work on a type of reaction called a sigmatropic rearrangement. This is a lot like a Diels-Alder reaction. It's different from a Diels-Alder reaction in that it only involves one molecule, not a diene and a dienophile. So it's an intramolecular reaction, meaning that it's taking place within just one molecule. Um, the reaction itself works, like I said, very much like a Diels-Alder reaction. So in terms of curved arrows, we're just going to pick one of the double bonds in this molecule and we're going to move it. I always like to go counterclockwise. Then we're just going to skip to the next bond, which isn't a double bond, but that's okay. And we're going to move that one counterclockwise. And then we'll go to our last one and we'll move that counterclockwise as well. Let's put some numbers on these carbon atoms. I always like... Just out of habit, I'm always numbering my carbon atoms in the exact same way with carbon number one on the top and then going counterclockwise. So if we go over here to our product to take a look at what we've made, this is our carbon number one, this is our carbon number two, and you can see that the single bond between carbon number one and two has become a double bond because we moved those electrons over. The bond from carbon two to carbon three has been completely broken. So there's carbon number three. Carbon, um, the bond between three and four is now a double bond. Four to five went from a double bond to a single bond. And then five to six, a bond was created. So this is uh, the mechanism for this particular rearrangement. This reaction in itself is not super interesting. The two molecules, um, the, the reactant and the product, they are exactly the same. They're the same molecule. If we were going to number these molecules in terms of naming them using the IUPAC system and come up with the names, we would come up with the exact same name. They are both six carbon um, dienes with the double bond at carbon number one and also at carbon number five. If we were looking at numbering in terms of the name, not numbering the way I num numbered it here to keep track of it. So this particular example is not a great illustration of the sigmatropic rearrangement because, you know, who cares if this happens because we haven't made anything new. This is uh, going to be a more interesting sigmatropic rearrangement. This particular type of reaction is called the COPE rearrangement. COPE uh, is a name of a person. The COPE rearrangement is the name that we give to this reaction when the rearranging portions of the six carbons that are involved in the rearrangement are only carbon atoms. We've got these six carbon atoms involved in the rearrangement, and they're just only carbon atoms. I'm gonna start by numbering them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And again, we're just approaching this the same way we would approach a diels alder So pick a double bond, move it counterclockwise, go to the next bond, move it counterclockwise, go to the next bond, move it counterclockwise. Draw yourself some dots for those six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. And let's see what kind of bonds we have. So between carbons one and two, we had a double bond. Now we have, have just a single bond. Between carbons two and three, we had a single bond. It is now a double bond. Between carbons three and four, we broke a bond. Four to five is now a double bond. Five to six went from a double bond to a single bond, and six to one, we made a bond. In addition to that, we have this six-membered ring that is part of carbons two and three right there. So this is actually a different molecule. This molecule here is not identical to the one that we started with. Look at the position of this double bond outside of the ring versus inside of the ring. So why would this reaction even take place? I'm going to think about what do we know about alkenes. The more substituents or more things we put on a carbon-carbon double bond, the more stable it is. Look at this double bond right here. It has one, two, three, three different things attached versus this double bond over here, which only has two. So the motivation for this reaction is that the product is a tri-substituted alkene. Whereas our reactant is disubstituted, and the trisubstituted alkene is more stable. Of course, we also have a monosubstituted alkene on both of them, but you know, monosubstituted versus monosubstituted, no difference in stability. So we're really just comparing these right here. Now, there's one more type of copearranged or um, 
uh, sigmatropic rearrangement that we're going to look at. This one is called a Clayson rearrangement. We call it a Clayson rearrangement when the rearranging portion of the molecule has an oxygen atom in it. So let's put some numbers on these carbons and or also on the oxygen and see what this is going to look like. Let's start with a bond between 1 and 2, move that bond counterclockwise, now go to 3, 4, move it counterclockwise, 5, 6, move it counterclockwise. Let's place some dots for those six carbons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and number them. I keep calling that a carbon even though it's an oxygen. And let's see where we ended up with with our bonds. 1 to 2 is now a single bond. Three, two to three is now a double bond. Four is an oxygen. I better draw that in. The bond from three to four doesn't exist anymore. Four to five is a double bond. Five to six is a single bond. And six to one is a single bond. So here's this. Again, a very different product than what we started with. We've got a carbon-oxygen double bond in this case. What is the motivation for this reaction? Well, we're just going to have to make an assumption. We're going to have to take a guess. Since this reaction does proceed, we started with a monosubstituted alkene and a monosubstituted alkene. We ended with a monosubstituted alkene and a carbonyl group, a carbon-oxygen double bond. So the fact that this reaction takes place tells us that a carbon-oxygen double bond is more stable than a carbon-carbon double bond.